Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with cassoulet. That's right, I'm going to show you my take on the world's most famous and also most complicated pork and beans recipe. And because this recipe is kind of involved and uses lots of ingredients and many steps, I don't want to waste time during this intro with the usual lame jokes and vague references. So instead of wasting my breath, let's just get right to it. And speaking of hot air, we're going to start with the star of the show, the beans. So we're going to start with one pound of white cassoulet beans. And this specific variety is called tarbe, which is the official bean for this dish. But no matter which bean you use, we're going to want to soak those in cold water overnight. And you can just let them soak. You don't have to swish them around like this with your hand. I only did that because I thought it'd make a cool shot. And I was right. But anyway, we'll let those soak overnight, at which point they should look something like this. And at that point, those are ready to drain and use. So our beans are soaked, and we can move on to the second most important feature in this dish, lots of flavorful meat. And I generally use four different types, some type of smoked and or cured pork. This time I'm using pancetta. I also like to use some fresh pork, seen here in the form of a nice fatty chop. We're also definitely going to need some sausage, preferably Toulouse style. And then last but not least, I have two legs of duck confit. So that's going to be my selection, but of course that can really vary depending on what you're into. And once we have all that stuff together, we can move on to the first major step in this dish, which is cooking our beans. And for that step, I do like to add the cured or smoked pork I'm using to the bean pot. And then besides our smoked or cured meat, I also like to remove the bones from the duck confit. Because if we're going to simmer beans in a stock, why not add any bones we have to it? That just makes sense. So anyway, we'll want to liberate any bones we have access to. And at this point, as you can see, I decided to cut my pancetta in even smaller pieces. And by the way, this was kind of an experiment. I usually use much less and kind of dice it. But for whatever reason, I decided to use larger chunks and more of it, which ultimately I didn't like as much as my usual method. But that's just one of many things we'll talk about on the blog. So what we'll do when our bones have been picked and our meat's cut up, we'll head over to the stove, where we will add our drained beans into some nice flavorful chicken stock, along with any of our cured and or smoked meats and reclaimed bones. And then to this, we'll also be adding some assorted herbs and spices, but we're not just gonna throw them in. We're gonna make what's called a bouquet garni, which simply means tie all those seasonings up in a little piece of cheesecloth. We'll just wrap it up, tie it with a string, and that way this stuff can flavor our pot, and once it's served its purpose, we can remove it all at once. And I don't have time right now, but of course I'm gonna tell you what I put in there. That'll be on the ingredient list. So we'll go ahead and toss that in and give everything a stir. And then what we wanna do is bring this up to a simmer on high heat. And as it comes up to temperature, foam will appear, which you are free to skim off. I usually do. And then what we'll do is we'll lower our heat and simmer this for about 45 minutes or until those beans are almost tender, like about 90% of the way. And while those beans are cooking, we are not gonna take a break. We have things to do. First of which would be to brown up any of the fresh pork we're gonna use over medium high heat in a skillet and a little bit of vegetable oil. And I did season that with salt and pepper. So we will cut our fresh pork up in chunks and brown it up nicely. And once that's been accomplished, we'll remove that to a bowl and go ahead and brown the sausage in the exact same pan. And as I mentioned, I'm using a Toulouse sausage, which is a famous French variety that features pork, garlic, and wine. And then once our fresh meats are browned, we will move on to the critical breadcrumb topping. So don't wash that pan, we're gonna use it in a second. Because what we're gonna do is break up all that duck confit meat, saving any of the skin and fat. And what we'll do is we'll transfer that fat and skin into that hot pan and cook it over medium heat in those pan drippings until it's pretty much all rendered out. And once that's happened, we'll just transfer everything into a mixing bowl. And believe it or not, we're actually going to use that duck fat infused pork fat as the base for our topping. And you're probably thinking, wow, pork fat and duck fat soaked breadcrumbs. It doesn't get any better than that. Oh, but it does. Because we're also going to add some melted butter. Because France to complete the holy trinity of animal fats. And at that point, we can go ahead and dump in our breadcrumbs, as well as a generous handful of freshly chopped Italian parsley. And we'll take a spoon and we'll mix that up until it looks sort of like damp sand. And then speaking of damp, once that's mixed up, I do like to add a little splash of chicken stock from our bean pot to sort of moisten those crumbs up just a little bit so they brown a little more slowly in the oven. So we will mix that up, and if everything's gone according to plan, it should look something like this. And once that's set, we'll go back over and check our beans, which by now should be just about perfect. And what that means is the bean is almost cooked. It's not quite perfectly creamy and tender, but it's almost there. And once we get to that stage, we can go ahead and drain our beans, reserving any and all cooking liquid. Repeat, reserve all the cooking liquid. 
So we will carefully separate beans and meat from stock. We will also, of course, extract our bouquet garni. And then in this next shot, you see me removing my pancetta from the beans and adding them to my bowl of meat. But you know what? That's probably unnecessary. I only did that because when I do final assembly, I like to have complete control over my meat distribution. And then once all that's set, we're finally still not even close. Because before we can put this together, we need to prepare our aromatic vegetable mixture. So in that same dirty, flavorful pan we've been using all along, we will add our mirepoix, our carrot, celery, and onion mixture, along with a big pinch of salt, and we will cook that stirring over medium heat until the onions turn translucent and everything starts to get a little bit golden, at which point we're going to stop and add some tomato paste, and we will stir that in. And we're going to want to cook that for about three or four minutes until the tomato paste starts to caramelize onto the bottom of the pan. All right, so let it cook until you see this happening. See how it's starting to form a fond on the bottom of the pan? When that happens, we're going to go ahead and deglaze with our white wine. And of course, that's going to release all that goodness off the bottom. And then all we're going to do is cook this stirring for, I don't know, about five or six minutes until most of that wine evaporates, leaving us with the beautiful thick mixture you see here. And once those veggies are done, at long last, we can move to final assembly, which means adding our drained beans and aromatic vegetable mixture to whatever we're going to cook this in which as you can see for me is my large, deep cast iron pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few ladles of our cooking liquid and give those beans and veggies a mix. And once that's been accomplished, we can go ahead and dump in our bowl of pork, along with, of course, any accumulated juices. And then do me a favor, because I'm a little bit OCD with this stuff. Make sure you distribute the meat evenly. And then once our pork has been placed down, we can top that with our broken up duck confit. And just like the pork, we'll even that out the best we can. And by the way, I should mention, if you can't find or you don't want to make duck confit, I've actually made this with chicken thighs and it's not bad. So that's an option, and of course up to you. You are, after all, the jeanette of your cassoulet. And then last but not least, we will place in our sausage. And don't just stick them in, I want you to nestle them. And as you may have noticed, I did cut those links in half, thereby doubling the number of pieces of sausage available. And then what we'll do to finish this off is to fill that up almost to the top with our cooking liquid. And by the way, I should mention you're going to have extra liquid left over, which is on purpose. But anyway, we're going to transfer in our cooking liquid, just ladle it in to right up about there, at which point we're going to cover everything with our beautiful buttery duck fat breadcrumb mixture and spread that evenly over the top, but don't press it down too much. Okay, we don't want too flat of a surface. So what we'll do before we bake this is take our fingertips and give it the old polka polka to give it a little irregularity and increase surface area. And as I've taught you before, extra surface area equals extra flavor. And once that topping's done, we are finally ready to cook this. So let's go ahead and transfer this into the center of a 350 degree oven for two hours. And two hours later, theoretically, yours should look something like this. All right, it should look fairly gorgeous. And you'll notice, especially around the edge, that a lot of that liquid has been absorbed, which is exactly what's supposed to happen. So what we'll do at this point is make a little well in the middle and add in a few more ladles of our cooking liquid to sort of rehydrate this. And once we've done that, we'll take our fork and kind of make sure that liquid's mixed in without wrecking the top. Okay, so a little bit of our crust is going down into the cassoulet, which is good, but we really don't want to mess up that entire surface. So I kind of go around with the tip of my fork, making sure everything's just so. And at this point, we will transfer that back into the oven for another 45 minutes or so, or until done, quote unquote. And for me, what done means is that surface is crispy and caramelized. As well as our meat underneath is fork tender, and our beans are perfectly creamy and tender. Which, don't worry, they will be. And other than my chunks of pancetta being too big for my liking, this came out absolutely perfect. And assuming the yours has also come out perfect, we can go ahead and spoon this up into a hot bowl. And then I'm going to show you one trick I like to do here. And that's topping this with a few spoonfuls of our flavorful cooking liquid. So you still should have some extra. I just keep that hot on the stove. And for me, that's a great way to lighten up the texture just a little without diluting any of the flavor. And then we'll finish that off a little more freshly chopped Italian parsley. And our cassoulet is finally done and ready to eat. And sure, it took like three or four hours, but it was totally worth it. This is just an incredibly delicious thing to eat. I know we started to post some lighter spring type recipes, but there's still gonna be plenty of cold rainy days ahead. And for that type of inclement weather, there's absolutely nothing better than this. And I'm always amazed that even though they cook for hours and hours, those beans still retain their shape 
and feature an incredibly creamy texture. Just an absolutely amazing bean. And by the way, you think you've had sausage before, but until you've had Toulouse sausage cooked in a cassoulet, you really haven't. So not only do I hope you find those beans somewhere, but I hope you find some Toulouse sausage also. But anyway, that's it, cassoulet. Yes, it takes a long time, requires a ton of ingredients, and almost as many steps. But once you make this and taste it, it's all gonna make sense, okay? So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and much, much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.